Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. Today we have a showdown. Integrated bracelet, perpetual calendar sports watches from two of the Holy Trinity. Vacheron Constantin overseas versus Royal Oak perpetual calendar from Audemars Piguet versus starts now. So these two watches are part of one genre and very similar mechanically, but worlds apart in detail. We're going to start with the reigning champion and the elder in the space as the original Royal Oak perpetual calendar was launched in 1984. This is part of the 2015 to present generation of the watch that features the perpetual calendar moon phase, but also the weekly calendar indicator around the edge of the dial. Now, what you're looking at here is a 41 millimeter titanium variant launched in 300 pieces, principally for the Japanese market in 2021, 150 pieces for Japan, 150 pieces for the rest of the world. Take a look at the size. 41 millimeters in diameter, it's large, though not oversized. We'll talk about the fit in a moment. 9.6 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip. We're just talking about the case, 50.6 millimeters. Then we have this little intermediate link or plot from side to side. You can see the plot, the plot thickens. It does increase the width of the watch, 53.5 millimeters from end link to end link. Throwing it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it wears very light, being all sapphire and grade five titanium. And that does mitigate some of the fit issues of the larger case. You can see on my wrist, it sits low enough to fit under a cuff, no issues there. Over the top, down the barrel, I believe you could probably get away with wearing this on a 15 centimeter circumference wrist, but you're probably going to have to like the look of a watch that's slightly oversized. And I would characterize it as a 41 that wears more like a 42 or a 43 round watch. Finish is a big part of what you're getting when you buy a Royal Oak. And the finishing of the bracelet alone is said to be 9 to 11 hours. That's bracelet alone. That's not the case. That's not the bezel. When Gerald Genta, who designed the first Royal Oak in 1972, coined the design, he envisioned a bracelet that just happened to have a timepiece attached, and it does fit that aesthetic as everything is highly integrated and flows together. He was also inspired by a vintage diving helmet, which is where we get the rounded octagonal bezel. We have white gold bolts that sit in the bezel. They're hexagonal. The crown, which is a screw down, also hexagonal, though curiously water resistance only 20 meters. We have a dial. This is the Grand Tapisserie. It is the large hobnail. It is not the small one, the petite that you find on the jumbo, and it's not the stamped mega that you find on the offshore. But as you can see, especially as we get close, it is cut on a pantograph with between 10 and 20,000 little textural details. It is an intricate engine turned dial crafted artisanal Hands and indices are white gold, so they won't tarnish over time. Now, what was different about the 2015 to present Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar is the arrival of an aventurine moon phase disc, a photorealistic moon phase, and then this weekly calendar indication. Mechanically, these two watches are almost identical, but you can see Audemars Piguet uses a different rotor design on its version of this movement. This is the JLC 920 Abouche. It was created in 1967 by JLC for the Holy Trinity, Patek, AP, and Vacheron only ever to be used by them, not by JLC or JLC's other customers. Today, AP builds and finishes this movement in-house, but it still has JLC roots. It has a beat rate that's quirky, 19,800 vibrations per hour, a beryllium ring that sits on four ruby roller bearings that suspend it over the base plate and the bridges, mirrored anglage, a mile wide, 40 hour power reserve, 38 pivot jewels, and you can see it's got a free sprung gyromax style balance. The bevels are really what slow down production of this movement. That is gorgeous, rounded, mirrored, artisanal beveling. You also see it in all the jewel and screw sinks. Solarization of some of the wheels, the winding system, the ratchet wheel, the crown wheel, uh, some of the secondary wheels associated with the winding and drivetrain system. The rotor skeletonized, internally beveled, satinated across its top. And of course, this movement is ultra thin. The base caliber itself being only 2.4 millimeters thick. And I believe the whole thing with the perpetual calendar is still just about 4.31, 4.35 millimeters thick. So very impressive on that front. We will do a quick loom shot here so you get a sense of the watch. I'm just gonna bring both of them in now so you can see how both of them are loomed. This is the kind of thing comparatively that you really need to see side by side. So. There you go. We'll draw our conclusions from this loom shot in a moment when we talk about advantages. But Vacheron on the left, AP on the right. That's your loom shot. Lots to love on the AP. 
Keep in mind, this watch can be had in a couple of different materials. Right now, the Vacheron Constantin Overseas Perpetual Calendar Ultra Thin can only be had in a selection of precious metals. So what you see here is the 2021 version of the watch in white gold. It is 41.5 millimeters in diameter, though only 8.4 millimeters thick. And you can see lug tip to lug tip, 49 millimeters, but the bracelet pulls straight down out of the lug. So 49 is the true lug to lug dimension here. On my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, I can tell you two things. One, the fit is better and it's flatter. And two, it's a much heavier watch. That's just a consequence of precious metal being used. The watch is super low slung and fits beautifully. The bracelet features a quick release system all individual links are removable. There is a sleeved sliding micro adjustment built into each side of the clasp. So you've got two of these right here. And note that the removable links are fixed by screws. We've got a double deployant clasp with twin triggers. The same system, though a different clasp used than on the Audemars Piguet. And we have a case that is beautifully made, though perhaps not quite as intricate as the AP. You can see there is a lot going on, though. We still have a high degree of hand finishing. I would say the bracelet is more intricately finished than the AP, whereas the AP's case and bezel are more intricately finished than the Vacheron. Still a push down crown here, so not the screw down like the AP, but then again, this is rated 50 meters, not 20. Dial side, we have a polished metal disc that's been lacquered on top, and then we have the date, date, month, leap year and the moon phase. We've got white gold hands, white gold indices, and you can see this is a sort of combination of a metallic dial, which the base is, and lacquer, which the coating is. Let's see if we can open up the bracelet here so you could better see the movement. I mentioned that the caliber here is actually the same basic caliber created by Chagere LeCoultre in the late 60s, and you can see so it is. Uh, both based on that JLC 920. The AP features 38 joules. This one features 36. That's the only real difference other than the quality of the rotor, which on the Vacheron I find to be more intricate and thoughtfully detailed, as well as laboriously more involved as there's several different finishing steps to this rotor. We'll talk about that in a moment. But this is the caliber 1120-3. That's what Vacheron calls it. Basically, technically identical to the Audemars Piguet in terms of power reserve, beat rate, and even the way it's constructed. I will say this does have one feather in its cap that the AP does not have. This movement right here features the Poisson de Genève, the Geneva hallmark. And while I consider their finish to be comparable, nevertheless, Geneva seal is Geneva seal. This one has it. There's also an anti-magnetic ring that goes around the movement that you can't see, which endows it with 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetism. And really, the biggest distinction between the two of them is the Geneva seal and the rotor. You can also see Geneva seal on the watch because since 2012, it has been a full watch standard. You can see how easily I removed and reattached to that bracelet. So let's talk about the advantages of the Vacheron. Lots to love. You can still buy this new. Right now, AP doesn't have a regular production titanium Royal Oak perpetual calendar. New, this is 100 115,000 pre-owned. This is $105,000. This is a much cheaper watch to buy new or used. And since again, that is a discontinued Japanese market edition, the Royal Oak used is $180,000 as you saw it right here. Whereas to buy this used, $105,000. Not only do we get a quick release system here, but we get two straps, one in blue rubber, one in blue alligator leather. They come with a separate clasp to use. And so you get three bands plus a quick release system with this watch. So advantage on that front. Uh, there's a lot to love about this bracelet. It has so many advantages over the Royal Oak. Every single link here is removable. You can also see that we've got the twin micro adjustments built in. We've got the quick release system. So this bracelet is better on several levels than the one you find on the AP. And that's before we even get to the intricacy of these inner polished facets and how well detailed this laboriously hand finished bracelet is. And remember, I cannot overemphasize that every link being removable gives you a lot more adjustability than a bracelet with only a handful of removable links. What else? Well, 50 meters versus 20, and I wouldn't swim with either of these watches. I prefer a screw down crown. If you only have 50 meters of water resistance, this has 50 meters, but it's not a screw down crown. Still, 50 meters versus 20 meters, I think you're much safer to wear this, even if you're just going to get splashed or rained on. And it's important to remember that this has that magnetic shield or paramagnetic ring to challenge any kind of magnetic field and bend it around the hairspring and the escapement. So advantage in water resistance and anti-magnetism. So much easier to wear 
The Vacheron is so much easier to wear. Look at this. Look at this flare. Look how broad this is across the wrist. Whereas with the ultra thin versions of the overseas, you can pull the bracelet straight down out of the lugs. And even the lug to lug, just the case by itself, is narrower than the AP. The AP is 50.6. This is 49. And that is its true distance across the wrist, not 53 plus, easier watch to wear. And I believe this had a better loom shot. Having, having shown you both so that we could experience the two in real time on the same screen, I believe having more luminescent indices and slightly thicker applications of loom on the indices and hands gives that advantage to the Vacheron. So on several different fronts, the Vacheron really noses ahead, but the Royal Oak makes up ground, and we'll talk about exactly how that happens. The first thing you need to know is that this doesn't have to be the one you buy. There are other options. Gold is available, titanium, steel, ceramic. You've got your choices here, whereas for now, these have been available only in white gold and rose gold. So the AP gives you options. Also important, this is much more exclusive. This watch being a 300 piece limited edition, basically scattered to the four corners of the earth, you're gonna see fewer of this model specifically. And the titanium Royal Oak perpetual calendars are extraordinarily rare, even by the standards of a rare breed. So exclusive. It's also an original. Now we can debate whether this was really the first integrated bracelet ultra luxury sports watch, but what we can't debate is that it came before the Overseas, the Vacheron 222, the IWC Ingenieur XL, the the Patek Philippe Nautilus and even things like the Gerard Perigo Laureato, that Ingenieur SL often gets lost in the mix, but it was one of the other Gentas. Even if you take all the other Gentas of the 70s and the watches that copied them, this one is still the granddaddy of them all, assuming you don't believe the Rolex 5100 Texan was designed by Genta. So an original. Whereas this is part of a series that came out in 1996, and this particular generation is one that came out in 2016. So originality carries a lot of value. Also, the Aventurine Moon phase to me is more attractive and so is the photorealistic moon. I think this is just a little bit more involved and thoughtful and the closer you get the more interesting it becomes whereas here the closer you get to that moon phase the more you realize it's not all that exquisite. It's fine but I wouldn't describe it as a work of art in its own right or thoughtfully considered whereas this feels like some people spent real time executing it. And the Aventurine is beautiful. A better store of value. Buy this and you'll never lose a cent on it. Assuming you private sale sometime down the line, I can't imagine this ever being worth less than it's worth now. Whereas here, this is more of a commodity. Markets are up, markets are down. You probably won't lose money on it long term, but we're talking very long term. This is a watch that is a little bit more drawn by the trends of the market, whereas this is more of a market unto itself. And for a limited edition in titanium like this, the market will always be robust regardless of the economy. Finally, status and recognition. I mentioned this is an original. Everyone knows the Royal Oak. It's an article of pop culture. People with no connection to watches will recognize this, understand it, even covet it, which again plays on the market unto itself angle. There's a lot more demand for this. At the same time, it's also less common being made of titanium and a JDM edition. So status and recognition for some people, that's going to be paramount. It's not important to me, but if it's important to you, I recognize this is the reason why many people buy luxury watches. So which one would I rather own? I'll be totally honest. I think that the argument economically and also fit-wise is for this one. Since they're almost the same watch mechanically, and the only real difference here is two extra jewels and a weekly calendar indication, I would go with this. I like the perpetual calendar complication, so they're both in the running, but I think the bracelet is so much better. Better. You get the extra straps, the quick release system, the micro adjust, all of these links come out. You're going to get the right fit. The case is thinner. The bracelet pulls straight down out of the lugs on every ergonomic front and on every front relating to bracelet quality, this watch wins. Plus, I don't think it carries the downside of something that is this recognizable, which is brand baggage and overexposure, this doesn't suffer from those. So all else equal, I would take the Vacheron. You guys let me know, which one would you take? Price and object, price, no object. Tell me in the description below. I'm interested to know.